David Lawson with CAPS, manufacturer of the Herc Reynolds 25-ton packing unit. This short video is going to go through the installation, setup, and operation of this package unit intended for return air applications. Okay, the first step in setting up the 25-ton package unit is determining how it's going to be transported. We give you two options in our construction. The first is a set of integrated forklift pockets that run both directions, this way and this way, allowing you various applications to truck the machine into tight quarters. The second is the, the, the unit features a certified lifting stacking cage that has lifting pads at each of the four corners. These four corners can be lifted to a single point lift and using a crane can be mobilized to set the unit where it goes. You need to pay, bear in mind that the weight tag is located on both sides of the machine. This particular unit weighs 4,600 pounds. To verify the fork truck and or the crane truck is capable of lifting 4,600 pounds. Last item for safety we have is we have the center of gravity clearly marked on both all four sides, allowing the rigger to be able to put a tag line on and balance the load as it's set in place. The last item is you want to make sure the unit's set on a stable, firm foundation and that it is properly leveled. The next step in the installation is going to be verifying the electrical requirements. All of the minimum circuit ampacity or MCA or MOCP maximum overcurrent protection is clearly identified here on the CAPS data tag. You'll need to determine what the application is for this particular machine as varying applications require varying power requirements. For instance, in cooling this unit requires 72 amps, in heating it's 118 amps, and in dehumidification mode, it's 170 amps. So you'll need to make sure that whatever the application is, that you have adequate power to operate the machine under those conditions. Now we've verified our power requirements. We've ran our cable over to our termination point. All of our package units have passed through cams. What that means is I can bring a primary source of power rated perhaps 400 amps power on deal on uh, 4 watt power, and we can pass through and daisy chain together several units. In this installation example, we're just going to use the primary power, so we're going to remove the dust and weather caps here, and we're going to take our cables and move those off the side so they're safely out of the way. Then we're going to take our cables, and we're always going to start with our ground. We're going to check our power as we go in there and make sure we've got good connection. We're going to go into each one of our ground, and then just going to follow L1, 2, and 3. As we go, I'm checking to make sure that the wires and cables have a good tight seal on them. That they're tightly affixed to the pins and we've got all three of our phases in so we now have ground l1 l2 and l3 hooked up you're going to want to route your cable out of the way so it's in a nice safe area no tripping hazards here we have an integrated circuit breaker built into our machine here but our primary power source is locked and tagged out right now so we're going to energize our primary power source then we're going to check for power and check and see if the phase is correct We've energized our main power line now, so we're going to go to our breaker here. And this breaker is all of our equipment we manufacture. We have integrated breakers in it to protect the entire machine. You're just going to need to make sure your breaker is sized for your cable sizing. We'll take care of everything else downstream of the cam locks. So I'm going to energize the breaker. And you'll note that we got our power light on, but we also have a phase incorrect light on. And that phase incorrect light indicates that two of these lines or reverse, the phase monitor's got the machine locked out, will not allow, allow it to operate. So we're going to need to lock and tag out our power. First, we're going to close the power here. We're going to lock and tag the power out. We're going to change out two of these phases. Please note, you never change any of the cam locks as long as the cable's energized. Okay, with our main power circuit locked and tagged out, we've reversed two of the cam leads. We traded L1 and L2, which A and B phase. Now we've re-energized our cable. Our cable's hot. We're going to turn our main power breaker on. And now we have our power light on and our phase incorrect light is off. That indicates that we're properly phased and we're ready to start our unit. All HVAC units produce condensate as a result of the cooling cycle with the DX refrigeration system. As warm air goes across the coil, the droplets of moisture fall out of the, the, the air and go down and collect in the drain pan. All of our evaporator coils are on the negative side of the fan, thus they have a P-trap here. And what you'll need to do is just take a bottle of water or a hose, and you're going to want to prime the P-trap before you start the machine up. That way it properly drains and all the water is able to get out of the machine. 
take a bottle of water, put it in the trap there, and just fill the trap up till it's full. There we go. Now the trap's full and it's got a prime in here, so when the fan comes on, the water will be able to gravity drain out off to a waste area or sanitary. All the package units in the Herc Rentals fleet are designed to be 100% return air. If the ambient outside is less than about 82 degrees, you can run with outside air, which means no ductwork connected. It's 93 degrees today. We're going to, this application requires us to duct in and out of the machine. To open up the duct tab, it's pretty simple. We remove the jeep latches. We pull the latch out here, and these open up, and they've got lid holders there. Very simple to open them up, remove these. They're spring loaded. We pull these out, and they'll fall over. We've got friction clamps behind the backs of these. And those are for our duct connections. And we're just going to take the duct work, and you're going to want to verify airflow. This is the intake here. This is the supply. The duct's got a label on it there. And you're just going to simply hook it up by hooking up the bottom and dropping all four of the friction clamps over the duct on all four sides. And that'll, that'll ensure a, a leak seal for the units as you lock them down. And pick up the other duct on the top. And you'll bring it in. And I'll usually load the bottoms first. Easier to get the bottoms in and bring the top ring over the over the top. You know, slide it on and you just bring the friction clamps down on top of it. Okay, we've got our two supplies hooked up. We've hooked up one of our returns. This is our last return. The 25-ton package unit moves 10,000 C of film at about 2.6 inches of total static. It's enough static to run several joints of duct work. We got everything plumbed in here. So this duct, these, these two ducts here will be the intake from the condition space, and this will be the conditioned air. So warm moist air in, cold dry air out, or be cold air in and warm air out. Package unit can do both heating, cooling, and even remediation. We can run heat and cool at the same time and just dehumidify the air. Okay, to recap our installation of our 25 ton package unit. We first set it in a level, stable surface using the lifting provisions uh, that we went over. We second, check the power requirements, verifying whether we needed heating, cooling, or dehumidification, matching the required power to what we had available at the space and what we needed from a generator. Second we did was go through and hook up the, the duct work. We've primed our condensate trap. Now we've done all of our hot work and all of our uh, duct work. We can remove our, some of our PPE here because the rest of this is going to be low voltage and just uh, going through some switches and setting the thermostat. Our main power is on here. Our phase is correct. The unit's very simple. We have two switches. We got one that's a master switch that's our off and auto. Then we have another system switch which says dehumidify and auto. Under standard operation, we're simply just going to turn it to the auto, the automotive uh, auto mode here. And our our breaker course is already on here. And we have the, the, the thermostats or the uh, system switch set for auto. This is our thermostat. But please note here, it says upon unit startup, system runs through a diagnostic. It's got a microprocessor in it that takes about three minutes to go through a self-check and diagnostic. After it goes through that diagnostic, then it'll, it'll power up our thermostat. Then we're ready to set the thermostat. We'll go through that next. Okay, we turned our main system switch to auto. Our thermostat has now lit up after our three minutes uh, self-diagnostic and you'll notice in the display right now it says room temp is 87 degrees system mode is off and it's occupied so these thermostats have four modes the first mode is off the second one's cool the third one is heat and the fourth one's automatic so we want you know, typically depending on your application whether we're renting it for heat we'll only want to set it for heat or for cool or the easiest way is to set it for automatic put two set points in and then I'll allow the machine to come on in the cool mornings and, and during heating and then come on in the afternoons when it's warm outside during cooling. So to get to these modes, all it's very simple. We're going to go to menu and by pushing it, it's going to say temperature set, yes or no. We don't want to set the temperature now, so we're going to say no. It says system mode set, yes or no. Well, it's in off now, so we definitely, we definitely want to set the mode, so we're going to say yes. It says the current mode is off, so use either arrow, up or down and we're going to change it. There's automatic, there's cool, there's heat, there's off. So again, off, auto, cool, and heat. And in this case, we're going to set it for automatic. And once we're done with that, we're going to say yes. That's going to say exit, yes or no. Yes, we want to exit now. Now we're going to go back and push the menu again. We're going to say temperature set point, yes or no. Yes, we want to set the temperature now. 
do you want to set the cooling? Yes. And the cooling currently is set for 92 degrees. Well, we know it's 86 out here, so we're going to lower that down just by simply put, uh, holding, holding this down for rapid. Or, right there, we get down, we'll get it set for 72 degrees. You can, you can use individual button punches or hold it. There's 72 degrees. And then once we're, we've got it where we want, we're going to say yes. That's going to say, since we've got it automatic, it's going to ask us, heating mode set, yes or no, yes. And we're going to set our heating for 68. So we're going to lower that down to about 68 degrees. That'll, that'll protect us for in the cool mornings and in the hot afternoons. And we're going to say yes. It says Fahrenheit or Celsius. We don't want to change that, so say no. And it says exit, yes or no. Yes, we want to exit. So now we've got a room temp of 88 degrees. The sensor is actually in the inlet airstream. It's set for automatic. We just set our cooling for 72 degrees. It'll give about a minute or so, and then the cooling's going to energize. All of our machines are two-stage, so the 25-ton machine got a first stage and a second stage, and it'll cycle between those stages as the load goes up and the load goes down. And that's all you need to know to set the 25-ton package unit and operate it and monitor the temperature, and you're complete. Our cooling's now energized on our 25-ton package unit. Again, it's set for automatic mode, so if it gets cool at night or this morning in the morning, it'll bring the heating on during the heat of the day, like now, it'll bring the cooling on. Should you have a respiration job and need this to be for just drying, or we call it DH mode, there's a switch right here that you just simply click it over to DH. The thermostat is no longer controlled by the unit. All the heat is on, all the cool is on, and now the unit just becomes a dehumidifier. And that's the operation setup and installation of the 25-ton herd rental 24.